Assalamu alaikum and good evening viewers. You are watching Prime Time with Anju Malik on Vice of Toronto Television. And I hope everybody is doing well. And today is July 19th. Uh, and we are with you as usual. Uh, coming to discuss, you know, something very, very important. Some of the pressing issues that we have in this country. But before I even come to that point and talk about who my guest is, uh, very importantly, if you're watching our show tonight, uh, number to reach us during the program is 905-670-4114. And feedback ke liye, our address jo hai, voiceoftorontotv at gmail.com. If you're on social media, pe hain, add Voice of Toronto TV is Facebook, YouTube, and our YouTube channel. And this is our social media handle. Um, as we are in summer, and the parliament is off, uh, I thought it would be a great idea to bring in someone who is very vocal, very lovable in the community. Uh, one of our member of parliaments, Ruby Sohotaji, is with us from Brampton North. And the whole idea and the notion of this uh, interview today, actually this conversation today, is to touch on a lot of uh, issues that we hear it on the radio, we see it on television, on a mainstream television every day, but sometimes we just don't have the answers. So I thought it'd be a great idea that I would have the Member of Parliament in our studios, ask her those questions, and uh, maybe we come to some sort of a uh, analogy that where we are going with this and how the government is performing and, uh, and uh, what to kind of look for, you know, with the problems that we have. Uh, on a daily basis at our hands. So without further ado, uh, I will take this opportunity. She have to run tonight, so it's gonna be a short uh, 30 minutes interview with her. And uh, I'll try to wrap it up quickly uh, with some, you know, firing questions to her. Asalaamu Alaikum. A very good evening, how are you? Wa Alaikum Salaam, and first and foremost, happy third anniversary <laughs> oh, thank you to much. your program. Um, <laughs> to you our know, channel. To your, yes. And Voice of Toronto TV channel. The viewers have been, you know, loving, loving your show, I'm your channel, I'm uh, and thanks for the, you know, quality programming and informing Thank us you. on so many issues. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful, wonderful gesture. Um, one of the major issues that, uh, and and a lot of people who are watching us tonight, um, and if you would like to give us a call, uh, you can exchange your sentiment with us. The member of parliament is here. You can call us, talk to her. Ask a question if you have, 905-670-4114. The first major most question is, in British Columbia, there is a port strike going on. There was some sort of a um, negotiation that happened, but it fell apart. Yeah. Logistics was say, effect food prices affect uh, everything is getting affected by that. Where are we on it right now? Um, you know, I just received a call uh, this morning because it was just yesterday that uh, yeah. the th uh, that you know we we heard good news. Yes, I had uh, some of the representatives of the union that have reached out to mm. me, even though I'm in an Ont Ontario, yeah. and they're all the way in BC. They wanted to you know speak to as many members of parliament as possible. So uh, a few had reached out to me. Um, we had talked about what their issues are. A lot are, are about retraining, mm -hmm. making sure you know. Um, people are given the opportunity to transition as the economy is transitioning. Yeah. Um, Seamus O'Regan has been very active on the file, the Minister of Labour. Yeah. This is his department. I know he had been working hard to um, get them into a room so that they can really properly uh, have fair negotiations at the table. Um, so, so, so what transpired that there was a deal in place and then it fall apart? So, where, where, where did we lack? Yeah, Andrew, it's, it's a good question. I don't think I have the full answer for you today. Okay. I, uh, that is something I want to get down to the bottom of. Okay. I, I did get a call today. Uh, however, it's just one side of the story right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there's two sides, two partners, bargain, uh, two, you know, employer and the union bargaining right now. And I, I would hate to just say, you know, w one position for one side. Um, but I'm actively, I'll let you know, okay. working on okay. it, trying to talk to both sides. As you know, it's the biggest port in our, in our country. It is. And it, um, it houses millions and million tons of logistics that get transported by trains, 
by trucks into other part of the country, yeah. and that is affecting our food prices, uh, our day-to-day, -day, you know, uh, yeah. other uh, things that we use, you know, uh, and that could be from anything into yeah. medical supplies and into food chain and into everything. So, so that's one. That's one of the uh, the things that are really hurting us. Yeah. So I I would strongly uh, suggest that you can speak with your counterparts and yeah. get the thing resolved ASAP. I agree. It's important. It's essential. Yeah. Um, the services. <laughs> oh. No problem. No problem. <laughs> and we're on live TV. No worries. <laughs> I'm no sorry worries. about that. No worries. Um, uh, I, I couldn't agree more. We were extremely excited uh, that you know we didn't okay. have to go to uh, legislating uh, a solution, but you know the fairest way uh, to get to I think a place where both parties are happy is if they you know find a solution okay. on their own, and and that's always the ideal way. We thought okay. we had that yesterday, okay. um, and now obviously the story is different. So yeah. I know the minister is going to be working hard on it. He had been before as well. We're going to try to get, you know, this situation solved. It's our top, top priority. It's a big issue. One okay. of, um, I would say, may, perhaps even the number one issue in Canada right now. It, it is. It is. And um, I'm going to, I have some, some of the very important points written down. Mm -hmm. And I thought it'd be a great idea to just get quick answers on those okay. um, for what you know for you don't know we'll get you back again and we sure. can talk in details sure. um, and I like to be honest I don't Syrian like to refugees, be asked. Syrian <laughs> refugees is a great great um, situation in Toronto um, I, I heard uh, an interview from Sean Fraser yesterday that the federal government is coming forward with 97 million dollars to support the provincial government with this housing but but if you look at it that if the government is bringing in the refugees in the country why we don't have a, things in place properly where you can house them and they don't sleep on the streets and they have been pregnant women you know some of them I heard that were living on yeah. the streets as well what um, is your take on that so uh first and foremost it's not syrian refugees um, they are all all refugees in general. Not even. Okay. Um, so that's why I think it's really important to, okay. to discuss this issue properly. There are government-sponsored refugees. Okay. Um, and that is when we have, uh, you know, uh, the United Nations uh, there in the refugee camp. So the documented worker, you, where they come in documented land as a refugee in this they country. They land as a refugee. Okay. It's a part of our commitment along with many other countries around the world okay. uh, like Afghanistan, like Syria, which mm. those are the big countries yeah. most recently Africa. we've heard of, and Ukraine. Um, those were the countries where the government had made commitments because of the current situation mm. there uh, to bring in certain refugees. They're pre-screened, security is Correct. done, uh, a place to house them is already arranged. Okay. Um, if they're fully government funded, uh, support for a year is arranged for those refugees. Okay. Uh, that is not the issue. And then there's other refugees that are sponsored by community groups, okay. uh, churches and you know other groups of, you know, f it takes five individuals to to put together funding and to sponsor and we have some organizations that also have sponsorship agreements okay. with the government they have also committed they fundraise or they have the money themselves they put that money aside and they support those families uh, for commitment of one year and they house them so any government or like or privately sponsored refugees are not the ones that you are seeing um, currently in okay. this situation All right. what has happened right now mm. is a uh, um, like we saw uh, in at the port of Quebec, or, uh, you know, a few years back, mm -hmm. there was a fear uh, from the Trump administration in the U.S. Yeah. and many of, the, of those people that wanted to seek refugee uh, or asylum in the U.S. thought that you know that they were afraid of that government and they wanted to cross the border into here. Mm. Currently, what we're seeing is in some African countries, there's been legislation against the LGBTQ community mm. is what I've heard of some of the refugees and there's others. These are asylum seekers. What the difference okay. between government-sponsored refugees and asylum seekers are yep. is that asylum seekers 
claim their status at the port of entry. Okay. Or perhaps afterwards. They come okay. on a visitor visa. Okay. These are people who were most likely granted a visitor visa or right. they showed up at the border claiming asylum. Oh, I so see. So it's very different. There's no plan, no one's expecting. These I are see. unexpected um, people who claim asylum. And we have from Pakistan. Um, those that land here at the airport um, and then so, claim so, so refugee status. So what you're status. saying that these are those people who come on a visitor status visa yes. in Canada yes. and on port of entry they claim for refugee asylum. Correct. This is the this is what who they are. These are asi asylum seekers, not government sponsored okay, refugees. Okay. Okay. And so there is a lot of support and services provided for government sponsored refugees. They are yeah, taken care of. That. We don't bring them in yeah. and put them on the street. At the airport they were yes. properly received by ministers or designated you know individuals from the government. They've been taken from the buses, then they go into proper housing, different part of the countries and then they stay there, they get monthly yeah. allowances and all that. And that's still the case. Okay. Um, so with with unexpected people who file at the border mm. or at the airport or, you okay. know, at some other point, they could even file four months after having been in Canada, right? You could go uh, to a lawyer and, and claim your asylum in the country. Correct, correct. And so what we're seeing is that, you know, certain people have been um, advising them to go seek help at a shelter and uh, the city of Toronto decided uh, many cities like Brampton and many other cities help support um, you know that is the city's part the province's part mm. that they pitch in mm. the federally funded government refugees we we take care of them as a federal government and so the city of Toronto decided to shut their doors and all of a sudden people were on the street I see so you know mm. I I hate to say but for some reason they wanted to play use them as a bargaining chip mm. to get fun more further funding um, and I'm not saying I, I, I think we all owe respect to you know yeah. uh, these human beings and we need to figure out how to support them and so that is why you saw an announcement from Sean Fraser yesterday giving additional support Correct. of 97 million to the city of Toronto right. not just the province so it's a commitment of 12 uh, point 12, uh, 1212 million I believe overall to the country um, we are in talks to see what the city of Brampton will receive mm -hmm. and uh, other cities that are also facing this issue okay um, but this is like this is a small um, you know Canada sees this problem we definitely need to be Canadian mm -hmm. about it we need to help people those in need um, but when you look across uh, the ocean to Europe uh, they get many unexpected refugee asylum oh, yes. seekers at their borders uh, in the tens of thousands Correct. at a time, right? Correct. Like with Rohingya refugees, we've seen Bangladesh has had to take in over a million yeah. um, unexpected refugees in that way. And so those are not government sponsored and planned for. Those are you never know who, who, who may show up at your port of entry and then change their mind. Um, from an IRCC perspective, um, because we often talk about immigration quite a bit. Uh, when we do see this happen, right. I know when IRCC, I mean, there's just an internal mechanism. It's not that uh, the government or the minister will intervene, but when IRCC starts seeing an increase of asylum cases mm. from a certain country where they claim to be a visitor, yeah. but then end up claiming asylum once they're here, uh, of course, that's allowed under the conventions we've signed, but I think you will see naturally IRCC will make, um, will tighten up the visa process for those countries mm. as soon as there's more asylum seekers yeah, of a certain com yeah. uh, country getting a visa from that country becomes more difficult, right? Okay, yeah. well, good, good, you have clarified it. Yeah. It's very, very good. Because there was a lot of confusion that who these uh, refugees are and then the uh, the m major television, you know, players, they are just portraying it in a different way. Uh, we're, we're seeing that surge from African countries right now, Uganda, uh, Nigeria, there mm. may be a few others. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, all right, let's, let's go away from this. Um, Peel Region Police uh, had did a big bust, I think a couple of days ago, in the auto industry, auto theft especially Brampton, Mississauga is at the rise. Um, this particular crime, I know it's not the federal issue too much. 
It's more to do with the provincial issue and the city issue. But are we tightening up our laws federally that these people who are organized crime holders, who, do, who does this on a regular basis, we, we put a stop to this and, and uh, every 10, 15 seconds or 30 seconds, there's a car gets stolen in Brampton, Mississauga, high-end cars, they get put in uh, containers, they get shipped away from Canada. What are we doing about it? Well, we've on uh, federal federal level, we've we've put forward legislation to tighten bail restrictions. I mm. know that bail was a big issue mm. um, that has been brought up by my constituents and and probably many in the Greater Toronto area. Um, so you know, we're hoping we have had meetings with the premiers and all of that. Uh, so we're making laws stricter when it comes to or the provisions around when a judge can give bail um, a little bit more difficult mm. uh, and now it is the province's job to make sure the judges the provincial judges these are provincial judges Correct. that are hearing these cases yeah. these are not going to federal court yes criminal law is a federal legislation but um, it's applied within a provincial courtroom yeah. and so judges have even even last year, let's just say, before our legislation had gone through, judges have the ability to deny bail. Yeah. No one is restricting that mm. they can completely deny bail mm. for all of their cases mm. if a fair um, if fair evidence isn't presented to show mm. uh, that that person won't recommit the crime or be a threat to society, right? Um, and having these crimes continue it is a disturbance and a threat uh, to but our community. But there are a lot of habitual people who make these crimes yeah. who are and so I'd urge who these judges who are the feed offenders yeah I would urge and these they judges, let go on the bail I would urge these judges not to let go on bail yeah. they have absolutely I don't know who's pressuring who like what is happening within the correctional system mm. uh, within these prisons right now and and what is happening whether it's prison pressure or or whatnot but it makes no sense to me as to why if uh, you know a judge has the complete power, uh, so the but now we're going to restrict that. So even the provincial more. laws need happen. to get more stiffer, and the need to reform needs to happen. Well, we are going to have to. Um, so now that we're putting for, we've put forward legislation to have more parameters, to have more restrictions around what a judge can do. Mm. So that I mean, they had a lot of discretion, and and if you don't use your discretion wisely, maybe some of that discretion gets taken away. Yeah. Um, but you know to reinforce that to train judges to make sure um, that this isn't happening in our courtrooms that that is a provincial issue right and mm. so um i think you know the police is, is is doing a job they're also underfunded as well they need more officers on the road mm. uh they're trying to hire more as well so it, it's i know a lot of times we want to simplify things but it, it's not as simple mm. as you know things uh, as we want to make things. It is complex and it is many levels of government, but I do think lots of progress is being made. Lots of talks are mm. being had, uh, even with the shippers, even with logistics companies, mm. right? That at one point didn't see the role that they play. Uh, with so CBSA needs to be, the border agents need to be more the, stiffer the as well. The border agency, we have tried to fund them more, but even CN Rail and CPP, right? Mm. Um, all, when things are being put onto their uh, into their cargo yeah. uh, on their rail you know them being able to differentiate like and, and mm. figure out what is being put into their mm. um, containers I think that's important mm. we've had that cooperation when it comes to drugs and contraband from DHL and all the big you know FedEx and all the big delivery companies where they have scanners and x-ray equipment and they don't want their shipment to be held up so they do their part and make sure that you know as mm. much as possible they screen the stuff that they're delivering and you know I think we're starting to finally get you know those companies at the table as well to also do their part so they're not turning a blind eye because their containers are getting held up too right of course their containers yeah. are getting held up mm. um, and they're losing uh, profit at the end of the day so you know a lot of these talks but have still, happened. But still, it's a very, very big business every day, 24-7. Well, you know. You know it's huge. It, it has become huge around the world, right? Yeah. Um, I've heard it from people I know in the UK, in the US as well, and it is a problem. And mm. once again, supply 
has caused a lot of issues when it comes to uh, you know, groceries and other things mm. you were referring to too mm. before, but also in the auto industry, yeah. um, supply has gotten to a point where it's more mm. beneficial to buy a used car or, or it's more expensive uh, and very be beneficial to sell a used car than it ever was before, mm. right? Uh, selling a used car, you never made a profit. Nowadays, for the first time in my lifetime, I'm hearing you could sell a used <laughs> car yes, for a profit, right? Correct. And uh, And so it's become lucrative it's become enticing for criminal organizations and we all need to do our part. I'm mm -hmm. not saying we have a role to play. I recognize that, our government recognizes that and we're all been having a lot of, uh, you know, meetings and discussions and not just that and in figuring out what, implement, what to implement at the mm -hmm. different levels so we can fix this. And I, I definitely have seen progress in the last couple of months, for sure. All right, all right. Um, let me, uh, let me bring your attention to uh, a very important issue. Yeah. And that is um, the government of Canada, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, is putting in $10 billion to put on these batteries in a plant in Windsor, Ontario. Obviously, it's going to create jobs. I reached out to the member of parliament there, oh. and, and um, we had a little bit of a talk back and forth. We want to get him on the show so we can get his perspective. But here's my thing to this, is that the government is putting in $10 billion, The province is putting in another $5 billion, $15 billion. And there's a lot of work hasn't been done on that. What's going to happen to the carbon tax? And they're talking about the rebates. But is there's a lot of work already been established that you give away that kind of money, $15 billion to a company over there. Obviously, they're going to create jobs, but I mean, but what's going to, how the emissions is going to be uh, work, you know, the carbon tax problem is going to be solved by them producing batteries, which there's no study in, in place right now that how much emission that's going to generate or is going to cut down the carbon emission. No, there's absolutely been studies and lots of research to show um, the reduction of emissions, whether it's public transportation or individual transportation. Uh, it's not the whole picture. No one is saying that it's the whole picture on climate change and how to, you know, get to our targets of reduction of emission. Mm. It's not the full picture. It's one part of the story and it's one part that we have to lead in. It's also a really economically smart, beneficial part, right? If Canada doesn't jump on this now, mm. uh, we have the underground resources, yeah. right? The below ground, the lithium, um, the mining that uh, has is already started in Canada, but we have the above ground resources, which is the skills, the people that mm. we have in Canada, the education base we have here. And then keeping it in Canada is much better than putting it into US, We are for the sure. best place. Yeah. Uh, and, and a lot of companies are recognizing this mm. now, right? Uh, and it is because of the below ground and the above ground. We, we meet both of those um, things that companies are looking mm. for. And of course, there are a lot of incentives south of the border. America is giving yeah. big incentives, right? And uh, we need to be able to keep on pace. So you think we have enough research all, already at hand available? Absolutely. We I do. mean, I, we have to also put in the infrastructure hmm. and, uh, and, and we've started and you've seen lots of different announcements on like charging stations and this. Hmm. And there's a lot more uh, we have to continue to do. Uh, both things have to go hand in hand in hmm. order to get people. We have incentives as well for people to buy um, electric vehicles. So, you know, if we're not investing and in doing all of these things, it's really going to be hard to transition um, our economy and also become no, not just following along where the ball is going, mm. but to be actually, you know, throwing the ball where, where it needs to be. And uh, I think uh, we are um, we are in a good position and we need to continue investing in these areas and leading. Otherwise, Canada will get left behind and Europe and the U.S. will pick up um, these uh, I would say exciting, exciting new um, job opportunities, yeah. right? And yes, old jobs will be eventually, you know, transitioned, but a lot of new, well-paying jobs will be created, and and that's why. Well, we this need is going to be a great opportunity for people who live in Windsor and the surrounding. And, and there's spin-off jobs. Over three thousand plus jobs just to 
you know. The, and there's so many spin-off jobs, right? Yeah. Um, a, a lot of spin-off jobs. So we forget sometimes mm. we just think, is that money worth 3,000 jobs? No. no, it might not be worth the 3,000 jobs, mm. but it'll be worth, you know, the contribution we make to reduce our emissions. It'll be worth all of the spin-off jobs that we have throughout Canada mm. as a result, right? And, uh, and it'll also help attract other investors and companies here and okay. uh, we've seen that in the IT sector as well. Uh, two or three more questions. Uh, importantly, first of all is foreign policy. Yeah. Um, last uh, I attended a media briefing uh, mm -hmm. back in November last year um, and this is to do with Pakistan, not for India. This is a Pakistan question. Mm -hmm. um, where are we at in regards to the immigration application processes time frames. I mean, I had uh, the Honorable Senator Ataullah John with me not too long ago. We, t we chat on it that during the show. She was pretty vocal, you know, uh, she talked about this. Then the Minister of Immigration talked yeah. about it afterwards. What is the update on that? Yeah, there was um, definitely a negative, you know, situation where the processing times had spiraled for, for Pakistan. Uh, Two to three years, and, basically. And many other countries, too. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're nowhere, we're back in the, you know, it's a couple of months type phase. Uh, not so is the processing center has been shifted back to Islamabad from, from United Arab Emirates? We have, uh, we, we have people on the ground. And now whether I would call that a processing center or not, I would, I'd have to, to, to verify, okay. but we have increased presence on the ground uh, that is working within the embassy. Yeah. Okay, so that that's going to reduce the time frame. It has already reduced. Time frames have come down for every country across so, the board so, right now. So, in your own consensus, what is the time frame for a visitor visa application right now for Pakistan uh, coming into Canada? Honestly, I'd have to do a quick search, but I, I will tell your viewers this. Uh, that you can Google uh, processing times, uh, you know, Canadian visa, yeah. and go to the government of Canada's site, you know, the one that is .ca. There, there, there was a notation I saw a few weeks ago where Sean Fraser, the minister, had uh, commented that, mm -hmm. okay, yes, it used to be three years during pandemic, but now we're gonna bring it down to 60 days from 120 days. Well, the issue there was not that every case was taking three years. It was that there were, uh, the oldest case had taken that long mm. and they were reporting on that. So I, I, I don't know why the reporting had become that way. Um, it's just like, uh, we're seeing this for work permits, even mm -hmm. from India, it's like, a you know, 100 and something days if it's uh, an online application and only 12 days if it's a paper application. There are some glitches in the system hmm. that are giving us bad information. However, if visitor visas from Pakistan were taking 200, 300 days, I would have a lineup out my door um, because I have a thriving big Pakistani population exactly. in my riding yeah. and that is not the case. What we're seeing is a couple of months on average. So this is the something new? <laughs> this is this is what it's been brought down to. I don't think, um, other than some cases, I don't think it was ever at that amount, but the website was definitely showing that. And the website created the controversy uh, that had happened. So but, I'd have to pull out my phone to tell you today. But actual working was much less. Ab absolutely. I, I didn't have a single visitor visa that had taken that long. Um, we always have 20% of cases, like for many country, IRCC, their processing times are an average, mm. and an average will apply to about 80% of cases, not 100% of cases. Okay. There are going to be cases where someone's identity matches with somebody else, mm. um, something complex in their file has happened, there's criminality, there's other issues that we have to see whether, uh, you know, whether they rise to the level um, that they are denied or whether you know there are minor issues that we can overcome. So there's always going to be that. There's so, going to be So thought. if, uh, to if be a constituent uh, from your riding comes to you and say, you know, I applied for uh, a visitor visa or, or I have sent a request out to my people in Pakistan, um, if their application get declined because if they don't have they have enough resources to show they have good jobs in Pakistan, but 
there are times that there are standard forms that have been given to them, you know, uh, we're just mm -hmm. not satisfied that you're going to come back. Yeah. How, do, do, how do we overcome with that? How do we but fight that? O over my years of experience now, I, and I've really gotten into the weeds on this, uh, I do think the community and applicants need to do a better job at their applications. Mm -hmm. When I ask for an application from someone, it's very mediocre, very okay. poorly done. Um, they throw in a couple of documents and then they, you know, say something emotional. Um, visitor visas are not given on emotion. They're not human. They're not compassionate considerations mm. for a visitor visa. Um, only in extremely rare life and death situations. Mm. Uh, but most of the times it's because you want to meet a family member. Yeah. They're given for tourism purposes. They're given to bring economic activity into the country. And they're looking for people who have good economic financial strength in their country, mm. who can prove, that's the key, who can prove that, mm. not just by words, but with documents. Physically, they have application. funds available, they have good job. They have to physically have funds available. Yeah. They have to show their job is paying them money and then show bank statements where the money is going into their account yeah. at the time that they're saying they're actually being paid you know, by a certain company that that company is actually depositing in. Mm. Or, you know, in different countries, systems run differently sometimes a little bit, whereas in maybe they're being paid in different means. But you've got to be able to show a paper trail of these things mm. if they have a business. So, 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 so in, in your own... Um, suggestion if somebody has putting in the right application proper documentation um, a good strong cover letter explaining everything that they've added in their file their, uh, organized file their visa should not be declined um, I would not be so bold to say that officers don't make mistakes I'll tell you that today there are there are mistakes we've had we've seen um, can those decisions could be overturned by would, by putting in a request through your office, if somebody have that kind of a scenario, um, they they can they can try for reconsideration if their application is a hundred percent solid. I see. Um, it's it's not always accepted, but uh, you know, for a visitor visa, but for example, there's no real if there is a process. mother with four children, yeah, I'm just putting a scenario. Yeah. a mother with four children and a husband. Yeah wants to just come in by herself with one of her son or two of her sons, keeping the husband and two children behind. She'd have to have a strong financial background. Okay. Her family would have to have, her husband or her, their family income would have to be strong. So like once again, you're presenting an emotion, a mother with two children. Mm. Emotions really don't matter in these mm. files. Mm. Um, what matters is to be able to show that but you're like coming, if you want to come here and visit a family member that you're and they're not coming a, in all together at one group. It's a good tie. It's a bit like what's well, mm. one of the things that they look at. Uh, they look at your ties, how strong your ties are to your home country. Right. Um, and so, yeah, of course, having family. And you will not retire in Canada. You're going to go back after the visit. That you won't claim asylum in Canada, right? right? Um, so that's what they're looking at, that you won't claim asylum. You won't become a burden on the system here. Um, that you are financially so well off in your home country yeah. um, and supported by your family and you have strong ties that you you know no one can read anyone's mind but they're just looking at those things because people with those things generally will go back mm. people that have poor connections to their country don't have a good financial um, you know background may okay. may change their mind when they come here okay right? That's um, you know we had our provincial elections not too long ago um, how are you, how is Honorable Justin Trudeau on a federal level thinking of restructuring this party on a provincial level? Because, oh, because the, the numbers were very disappointing, not that nobody had won any seat in the provincial election, just with, just with yeah. a few numbers. So things are different from like Pakistan and India here. Uh, Maybe not completely, but the, I mean, the NDP uh, party is the one party that does have some connections to their provincial um, namesake. Okay. Um, so they share membership, they share um, a common, um, you know, group and uh, system, I guess. 
the Liberal Party is different across the country provincially. Okay. Um, you know, you have BC Liberals that you mostly have Conservatives that run for the BC Liberals out in, in British Columbia. Mm. Um, the Provincial Liberals, you'll see that their logo is different, their membership is not shared. We have nothing to do mm. with the Provincial Liberal Party. Okay. Um, of course, there's a, a kinship, maybe like a, a shared uh, a history and therefore like you know they they fall somewhere on the political spectrum that could be similar to us here in Ontario mm. however in BC they don't they okay. fall somewhere else right so it's it's names and I think people are getting caught up in the name uh, but the federal party of uh, the Liberal Party of Canada is its own individual party in this okay. country and the Liberal Party of Ontario is a separate party okay and uh, yes sometimes you will have crossover here but in other provinces you may have no crossover at all mm -hmm. ever because mm -hmm. there's no vision shared um, so yeah there isn't Justin Trudeau and the Prime Minister of Canada spends time worrying about Canada and federal issues and you know how he can best serve Canadians and does not worry about what the Ontario Liberal Party is going to do and what their moves are next. okay so there is yeah. no kind of a say in, the, in that okay okay uh, good to know um, we're gonna go for uh, we have uh, maybe uh, two or three minutes of break uh, we have some commercials to run we're gonna quickly do that and we're gonna wrap come back and wrap up with a couple of rapid-fire questions okay. uh, that good enough yeah okay all right I know you have it's to always run. good to be with you Anjum. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> uh, viewers we're gonna come back in about two minutes of break uh, you know we have some commercials to play and some messages to um, put out uh, please do not change this channel. We're coming back. Thank you so much for watching Vice of Toronto TV. Thank you. Are you buying a home and need a mortgage? Are you taking money out of your home equity or refinancing your mortgage? Do you know your budget? How much you qualify for? Don't guess. Talk to a professional. You need an experienced and professional mortgage broker to help you get the right mortgage. We have over 30 years of banking and financing experience with thousands of satisfied clients. We can help you take important and right decisions in your life. Aftab Rashid Mortgage Broker. Call 647-300-3304 or visit xbanker.net. We are professionals. We are ex-banker. Can't go back, I'm on a good foot. Do my dance because I look good. Shake my hand and I move my shoulders, legs, hands and feet. I know you mad, that's what input. It ain't my fault that I look this good. And I don't care because I got my hat on lean like a king I got a smooth disposition Got the swag running all through my veins In the coupe when I'm whipping I try to top like a make a crane When you talk I don't listen Cause I don't really want to hear you complain I make a smooth transition And bounce back like a basketball game Who that got him up now? Who that got him funky like me? Got their hands up like a touchdown where they sweating, they gon' need an IV Who that got them up now? Hello, this is Tahir Mangat from Remax Millennium I'm top producer and award winner uh, realtor for multiple years We provide you under one roof real estate services, mortgage services and legal services for all the real estate matters my contact number is 647-778-7879 and I'm searchable on all the social medias with Tahir Mangat name and I sell it for max and I'm the best negotiator. Zindagi da matlab udho samajh aunda hai jad assi travel karde haan te je traveling to hatta supna hai ta assi is supne nu sach karde haan EGN Travels to hatti journey nu banan ekdam smooth domestic and international travel all inclusive packages cruises super visa insurance eh sariyan services naal EGN Travels hai to hatti hal traveling need layi one stop solution two locations to serve you Brampton and Mississauga ETN Travels serving you from two locations, Brampton 905-463-1301, Mississauga 
4631304. Hi, my name is Sandeep Singh. I'm the owner of Heritage India Restaurant. It's a fine dining restaurant with tradition and culture. अगर आप पुरानी दिल्ली की ट्रेडिशन कल्चर और माहौल को एंजॉय करना चाहते हैं खानों के साथ तो प्लीज आए हेरिटेज इंडिया 485 मेन स्ट्रीट ब्रैम्पटन मैं चाहता हूं कि आप अपनी फैमिली और दोस्तों के साथ यहां आए आकर के हमारे खाने का लुत्फ उठाएं और अगर आपके यहां किसी तरीके की कोई पार्टी है बर्थडे पार्टी किटी पार्टी बेबी शॉवर तो हमारे यहाँ डिफरेंट हॉल्स भी हैं जिनका आप पूरा फायदा उठा सकते हैं Muslim Welfare Canada has made a concerted effort to lead the fight against child labor, poverty and illiteracy in third world countries through the generous support of our donors. Both girls and boys receive free, good quality education. Help educate a needy child for just $1 a day or $30 per month. Donate generously. Call 1-866-754-3111. or visit mwcanada.org वेलकम बैक व्यूअर्स आप देख रहे हैं वॉइस ऑफ टोरटो टेलीविजन की लाइव ब्रॉडकास्ट मेरे साथ अंजु मलिक के साथ और आई हैव द ऑनर ऑफ सिटिंग विद द मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट रूबी सोहोता फ्रॉम ब्रैमटन नॉर्थ विद अस टुनाइट Or uh, during our conversation, we've been uh, chit-chatting and discussing a lot of issues uh, that we have at our hand in Canada. Uh, some of the federal ones that we are discussing, that it was the most important thing. And there's a couple of more that I'm going to ask her. But during this uh, conversation, if you want to ask something, then our studio's line is open. नंबर इज अगेन ऑन द स्क्रीन नाइन ओ फाइव सिक्स सेवन जीरो फोर वन वन फोर सोशल मीडिया हैंडल अगर आप हमें फेसबुक पर वॉच कर रहे हैं विच वी कैन सी यू आर अगर आपको कोई क्वेश्चन हो तो आप हमें फेसबुक पर पूछ सकते हैं इट इज़ एट वॉइस ऑफ टोरटो टी वी एंड यूट्यूब इज़ द सेम एंड इंस्टाग्राम इज़ द सेम वॉइस ऑफ टोरटो टी वी एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम इज आर ई मेल एड्रेस इज़ द ओनली ई मेल एड्रेस फॉर यू टू गेट गेट बैक विद आस विद योर सेंटिमेंट्स एंड हाउ वी कैन गेट बैटर टू डू बैटर शोज फॉर यू थैंक यू सो मच कमिंग बैक टू यू रूबी जी टू मोर क्वेश्चन very importantly and and i just came into when i when i was discussing this i thought i should ask you this um the federal minister of immigration sean fraser not too long ago talked about some new reforms in the immigration programs yeah. and bringing out some pilot projects especially for doctors technologists radiographers uh, radiologists all those kind of thing can you put a little light on that what province are they going to be going into and what is the the protocol for someone who is watching your show tonight us in pakistan or india or wherever and if they are from that category and they can apply yeah uh so you know the the point system like generally it's referred to the as the pr point system program okay. um express where your entry program. express entry yes. express entry is the actual name of the category um those th- that type of program you're invited to apply right yes. and you have to meet a certain um category uh, yeah. level of points exactly and um so the canadian experience class is what we're talking about in in particular um they have now identified and i think this is a it's a really 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 good step because for a long time um my criticism has been back my feedback back to the government has been that we have a skills mismatch right uh we're often bringing in um and and making those pr in this country uh that are not being able to give back their skills in this country and we have labor shortages in certain areas and so uh we don't need everyone to be in school here for um those that are internationally studying here that you know maybe are taking business management right we we need more people in specific fields and so he's created a whole bunch of categories um that you know knock codes if for for those yeah. that are familiar with immigration there's Our a national occupation there's, classification there's there's a list of knock codes now yeah. that have been 
uh, pinpointed okay. where those are going to be prioritized. All right. They're going to be given a certain uh, number uh, that are particularly going to be taken from those not codes. But that would that be also for the province of Ontario or it has to be the other provinces? Uh, so the province has their own provincial nominee programs that they run yeah. in their own way. That PNP is, programs. They, they yeah. have control over those programs. Okay. So provinces can bring in people that are specific to their needs. They do have an immigration minister okay. themselves. Uh, we are the ones that st you know stamp the visa at the end of the day, but the province selects people and picks them. So they have freedom to pick people right. how they want, and then we process the visa mm -hmm. afterwards. So there's a slightly different process mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. um, but for the Canadian Experience Class, uh, we are making sure that uh, you know we bring in and land those people that have the skills we need right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's go. You know, you can go online and get all of this information. So I suggest people plan, strategize um, about this if they really uh, are interested in making Canada mm. their home or are looking at a few different countries as options. You know, take a look at how long does it take mm. to settle. You know, yourself your parents and others and compare them to what other countries are providing. I know that there's often frustration sometimes here, uh, but I'll tell you <laughs> in terms of being welcoming and being, you know, having the most options possible, um, or maybe I wouldn't say possible, uh, relatively speaking to other countries, more options and possibilities, you know, we are at the best place. And, and that's why we are seeing people who worked in the US are coming here. People who've worked in Germany and, and, and other places, right? Mm. Australia, we're mm. seeing a lot of people from Australia and Dubai. I, I'm bumping into lots of people from Dubai, right? Um, they want to feel like they're a part of the country and mm. Canada provides that. We provide freedom um, of <coughs> mobility. We provide um, the ability to become a Canadian eventually as well, right? So Canada is a very, um, I think, uh, a good option for many people around the world that mm. can bring the skills that are needed but I also say don't blindly come mm. you know uh, take a look at uh, where the jobs are and, and see if there will be something uh, that would be a good fit for you uh, I hate to see when when people come just because there's a hype in their home country about coming somewhere and they <coughs> don't really know um, why they're coming or what area they want to work in or uh, what e field they even want to study in mm. and so being unprepared is not good in any country uh, especially a country that's like a yeah, fast-paced place like Canada where it's competitive um, make sure that you know you you're well knowledgeable on uh, the options here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. one of the other question that really touches my heart and that is youth and mental health yeah a lot of people are committing suicides uh, and you can see it every day in uh, Toronto uh, other part of the country people are uh, jumping off the bridges they are going in front of the trains they are overdosing themselves yeah. what is the government priority with this are are we having I mean, having a funding is one thing, but yeah. the, the, the Minister of Federal and Minister of Health, Health. Uh, what he or she doing to overcome these problems in this country? Um, the drugs, the alcohol, abuse, overdoses, and all those kind of things. Is it any way we can keep this out of the reach from the, uh, from the youth so they don't get into that? I mean, you can look at the the convenience stores where people are now selling wines and beers. Mm -hmm. You have cannabis, you have all that stuff is across, you know, you look around where in the neighborhood you live, yeah. people are in this business. And and I, as a parent, you know, yeah. it kind of, it's very affecting me. Yeah. Uh, not that I do television, I host shows, but in general when I say this, and when I see people from different walk of life, people, somebody you knew, a neighbor, a friend, or his family member, or your son's son, or somebody who have done this or committed a suicide, yeah. what is your take on that? Well, unfortunately, I think people, there, there's 
there is a epidemic, of course, in here in Canada and many places across the world of use of substance abuse of very strong drugs. And I don't think we're just talking about marijuana. I think yeah. there are many uh, instances I'm hearing of, of much harder, um, more addictive uh, types of substances that are being used and even pharmaceutical, you know, prescriptions that are misused. Prescribed and drugs. Prescribed yeah, drugs as well. is a big problem as well. Um, so, you know, here is where, like when we were originally speaking, where I share um, a vision with the previous provincial government, the liberal provincial government, that wanted to have a more controlled system, just like the LCBO system mm. that we currently have for marijuana as well. Uh, that this is going to, you know, be sold in, in, in the LCBO type of a system, whether it's a separate one or incorporated, you know, that's what they were working on. Mm. Um, however, you know, this is like where political, you know, ideology differs sometimes. Conservative governments like small privatized um, no, options like to the, be better. And like, so like that's I, why I, you're I, like seeing I it see, in convenience stores. Like I see there's so much crime is committed. Yeah. When we talk about banning handguns in this country, why don't we ban these drugs? Why don't we ban all this and we can have these people live their lives? People don't die before 30s or 20s or early in the 25s. Yeah. I mean, it, it's sad. So what we have around guns is like regulation and we have regulation around these things as well. Um, and so, you know, marijuana has been given a regulatory framework and how we're going to control it. Before that, it was a banned substance or, or what you would say was an illegal substance. We were still considered, well, statistically, we were the highest youth using population in the world of marijuana before it was legalized, right? Um, so making it legal is that, you know, you're taking the power and the control out of illegal organized crime uh, that profit off of that. And, and maybe that's why you're seeing also organized crime shifting to other areas to make money uh, because now those that are of age uh, can purchase. And what we're also seeing, I, I, just in the marijuana framework, um, we're also seeing that Stats Canada's reports are showing that you know use has increased amongst seniors, seniors who need it for medical reasons, for pains and cancer, and and so many other ailments that you get at senior ages, right? Whether it's um, whether it's a, it's a cream or a, you know some type of other um, type of way to apply CBD and oils and other things, uh, that is where you're seeing an increase. But we've always had a problem uh, and addictions in terms of opioids is what our big big issue here in Canada today is um, and we're trying to figure out solutions with the provinces um, and cities to see how we can support people and you know provide them health care and and healthy options but but you're right Anjum I don't, I don't disagree with you that um, it, it's a problem we're facing and mental health is, is is can be a separate issue and sometimes it can be an issue that's linked with these things uh, and it's a real fear right and so we need to I think the best thing is awareness education uh, just like for cigarettes we've had seen a big decrease in this country uh, with tobacco use and cigarette use and that is because there were decades of campaigns run on educating uh, the population about its harms and I think mm -hmm. you know that's the best thing because we haven't had education even for marijuana in the past we've just ignored it and said it was illegal but now within the framework the taxes that are raised uh, for that substance education awareness treatment are all a part of what the money goes towards and you know hopefully the attraction will decrease from that as well. Does it form in a different place? It, it may. So this is definitely a conversation we can have for a long time in terms of health, you said. Yeah. You know, we have invested and given for mental health more than any government ever has before. And we'll continually to monitor the situation and provide that support. Um, you know, this is a little bit of a, uh, this is where I'm going to get a little bit partisan, I, I think. You know, if you do have a federal conservative government, they already didn't agree with us uh, providing more funny money to the provinces on health care. You know, they, they are about cuts and spending less. Um, but 
I, I can agree with some of that too, but I think we do need to invest in the right places, right? Like mm. the CCB. Tomorrow, the Canada Child Benefit is going up. And uh, families with children under six are going to see, you know, about $7,000 uh, a year for, uh, you know, children under six. Mm. And those with children from seven to 17 uh, could see anywhere from, uh, seven, you know, $6,300 a year. And these are important supports that are there to make sure people can put their children, I'm not completely going off topic, people can put their children in good programs and daycares and uh, camps and lots of things, providing families the help and support they need when parents are working. Uh, daycare, and 50% of the provinces now and territories, daycare has come down to $10 a day. Mm. $10 a day from where we were before, just a year ago, we were at you know $1,200 a month per mm -hmm. child mm -hmm. and uh, we are either at 50% reduction in costs or $10 a day already in Ontario uh, is, is close to being there as well. So, you know, we're trying to support families in, in ways where they can hopefully keep their children um, well provided for, uh, out of trouble, giving them the supports and, and the love and, and security they need. I think root causes are very important and you'll always see that Liberals, you know, that is a part of their um, what's important to them is to not just only punish, but to solve problems uh, from why they begin. Mm. And, and, and I think you can't, you have to do it all. <laughs> and it's not that you, we don't punish. You've, of course you do that, you treat, but you also figure out why, why is this happening in our society and provide support and programs for families. Yeah, I think honestly, this could get much better. I mean, because people don't want to lose your children at an early age. Yeah, uh, Especially committing suicides and overdoses and dying. Uh, we in Canada, we are the best country in the world. I mean, honestly, we need to put a stop to this. We need to pay attention we, to our children yeah. too. We do, we do. We need As to a talk parents, to our do. children. 100%. And we 100%. need to pay attention. Yeah. And for a long time, I was born and raised in this country yeah. too. Uh, I know the immigrant struggle. My parents, yeah. uh, you know, have that immigrant struggle, and the amount the of the onus is on the families. Number one, at home, yeah. you're, but you're, you know, there's a lot know. of denial. It is. There is a lot of denial. Families that come to me, it's a you know, only few will ever come and admit. Most will deny, and they see the signs, but they think yeah. that you know. I, and I have to say, they'll they'll think that there's some other spiritual reason or some other reason mm. why uh, the child may be behaving a certain way or mm. why they have you know started using drugs and mm. you know and and to each their own but uh, you know yeah, i think they need science to keep and the medical lines of communication open yeah sit down with your children on the dinner table every night and talk to them this yeah. is very important it's extremely important. last but not least the last question here before i let you go and we'll talk in detail more in the next coming days yeah you are in coalition government with uh, some sort of you know coalition with NDP. Yeah. If everything goes well, the government continues to move forward. What do you think? Are we seeing any elections happening it's soon, or this is going to do our whole term? Yeah. It's funny as I go into different events over the summer. This is like a, <laughs> a question um, that many like to ask. Uh, you know, we can only take it one day at a time. Okay. Uh, issues emerge, like you saw with the, the port strike. You yeah. know, things come up that you don't expect to come up. Mm. And we may, you know, eventually have different views on things. Uh, we have a supply and confidence agreement together with the, uh, you know, NDP party. Uh, we have set, uh, you know, certain things uh, that we want to mm. work together on. Dental care was a big one. Um, and then there's other, the, you know, the transition of the economy. There's, been, there's many others, indigenous housing and, and things that we work on together with them. Um, and, you know, I have friends in the NDP, friends in the Conservative Party. We try to work um, in different structures, whether it's in committees together. People don't see that part as much. They yeah. only see the arguing in, in question period. You know, but we can all agree on some things that are good for Canadians and achieve those. And so that's what we're doing with the NDP. And as long as that okay. keeps going, right. we'll keep doing that. <laughs> right. uh, but we may have a difference at one point in time. And, right. and it's hard to predict that, right, Anjum? 
I thank, don't know. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Ruby Sotaji. Um, thank you so much for always coming and sharing a lot of this wisdoms that uh, knowledge that uh, that you share with us. But at the same time, it's good that a member of parliament comes in, uh, have an open forum, have some questions, and and answer those for our people to understand what's going on, you know, yeah. in our part of the world here. And and <laughs> you know, in all honesty, you don't even warn me about what the questions really are. So <laughs> no, you know, no. the viewers and, and, get and, an and honest. My part of the world, uh, nothing, nothing is preset. Yes. Everything, everything, what comes here is asked, and, and I'll tell to everybody who comes in here, uh, every member of parliament, mayors, uh, you name it, anybody who comes here, uh, this is how, uh, this is how we do it. Yeah. We do it raw, and we do it uh, very uh, transparently. Well, thank I hope you so the, much. Hope the viewers enjoy that. And no, I I'm sure. Say thank I'm sure it them. will. I'm sure it will because when the message goes out and they see that uh, this is not a preset interview, this is uh, everything is random. Yeah. Uh, you're getting a random answers. Uh, this way, they understand that uh, whatever coming from you, it is what you know. And whatever is not there, we can always bring it back and we can chat again on that. Absolutely. And I hope I have good news about the port situation for you soon. Um, you know, and there's many, many announcements being made daily right now in the summer, yes. right? The summer is all about uh, ministers being out there making their announcements. So stay tuned. This is, this is campaign rallies. Follow, follow along, <laughs> see what's happening. But I know many are on vacation and on their breaks. They are. So enjoy your summer. Thank you uh, so To much. you and to all your viewers. You. Hope I'll you have a you wonderful soon. summer. Thank you, viewers. Uh, uh, this is one of our show tonight and uh, feedback zor dijiyega voice of toronto tv at gmail.com apna khayal rakhiye aur zindagi aur sehat mein wafa ki to inshallah i'll come back to you next week again with another guest with another topic till then a very good night bye bye thank you ji thank you